Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today we're going to talk about fluency in speaking. Fluency in speaking is one of the biggest markers that you've finally been successful. It's very easy to achieve and there's a few little tricks that you can do to sound more fluent. I know that all of us are very sensitive about the way that we speak because people perceive us in different ways. Many English learners around the world that I speak with are always very concerned about how other people perceive them. How do they sound to them? Do they sound fluent? Do they sound happy? And all of these ideas come up, of course, based around stereotypes, based around our own insecurities and ways of thinking. But there are a few very basic things that you can do to make your speaking better and to sound more fluent. One of the biggest and obvious things that you can change right now are the spaces that you leave between the words. Now you'll notice that when I speak, I'm speaking a little bit slowly, but do you hear any spaces between my words? No, you probably don't, because there aren't any. Let me explain. I'm just going to say a sentence. Joseph went camping at the weekend. That's a very different thing from saying Joseph went camping at the weekend. In my second example there, you can hear a lot of spaces. Joseph went camping at the weekend. It sounds a bit mechanical. It sounds a bit, well, it sounds a little bit like artificial intelligence, to be honest. If you can work on just taking away those spaces, you'll sound much more fluent. Big deep breath. Joseph went camping at the weekend. Now you can see there that I stretch some of the words. And I did that to show that there are words in there, but it's one long phrase that I'm using. Joseph went camping at the weekend six words joseph went camping at the weekend but let's just pretend for a moment that it's one it's one word with six bits okay so let's just say that again okay and this time see it as one word big deep breath in joseph went camping at the weekend so camping is stretched slightly and so is weekend Now, if you feel that that's too hard to do, that's perfectly fine. It takes a bit of practice and with shadowing, it gets better. But if you really find that it's too hard to do, a little trick that you can do is to fill the spaces that you know that you're making. Okay, let me just explain. So let's just say, for example, that I'm really uncomfortable, okay, with saying this. I'm an English learner. I don't like to say it. So I get to Joseph went camping. So instead of leaving that space, I can say Joseph uh, went camping um, at the weekend. So the spaces have been covered with uh, and ah. I even could stretch the word more to cover the space. Joseph yes he went camping at the weekend i believe yes and immediately it sounds a little bit more convincing because people can hear that you're thinking the problem that many people have in english are these awkward gaps in silences because in english they're perceived as being very rude especially if you're not using intonation, which is where you put your voice up and down as well. I remember when I first started to teach, some nationalities in the world don't really use intonation 
and they speak very flat. And I interpreted these behaviors as discomfort. I thought that maybe the student was playing games. I thought that they were unhappy. They sounded like they didn't have any personality. It wasn't until I actually managed to speak to some uh, native speakers of these countries that I understood more. It's just how they speak. It's not a personal attack on me. And it's certainly not a reflection of what they think of my teaching styles. But in the beginning, that was something that I really had to deal with because I was aware that it felt like somebody was trying to pull my energy, you know. And of course, it was completely wrong. So when it comes to this idea of leaving spaces or not leaving spaces, there's a real danger here that you may be being perceived by English people as somehow being rude, abrupt, or sarcastic purely because your voice doesn't sound warm. One of the first courses I ever did in the UK was a course called Smile. You're on the telephone. And what that taught me, this was many, many years ago, is the importance of creating a good ambience when you're talking to anybody. Because it makes you sound approachable. It makes you sound like somebody that is open to new ideas. But if you don't sound approachable, and if you don't sound like the other kind of person who has a very good mood, then of course things like promotion will pass you by. You'll be told, oh, you're a really nice person, but we just don't feel you're a real team player, meaning that sometimes you're perceived as being cold. These kind of things can easily be fixed if you simply take a moment to fill in those spaces. Let's look at maybe a dialogue, okay, which might help with this. So imagine you're on the telephone. You answer the phone. Hi, good morning. How are you today? And the customer says, fine, thanks. How are you? And you say, oh, I'm very well. How can I help you? Immediately, you're off to a very good start there, okay? Now, let's change that around. The customer calls. You answer the phone. Uh, hello? Uh, hi, uh, how, can I, how can I help? And the customer says, Oh, hi, yeah, I, I would like um, to order two of those items from your website. And then there's a silence. Two items from the website. Yes. Okay, what two items is it that you want? And at that moment, the customer is detecting that something isn't right, okay? So his behavior will change, and he will say, well, the ones on your website that you have the free phone number for, the only ones? And then there's another moment of discomfort. You can see there how that just goes wrong. But what he does know is that the problem is because of your English, not because, for example, you're having a bad day. Because if a native speaker did that, it would be quite violent, you know? So what you need to do is to fill in those silences. Sure, let me check for you. Let me just check with my colleague. Okay, let me just pop you on hold for a second and I'll have a look at that for you. Yeah, just bear with me one second. Let's see, let me get that website up on the screen. Ah, yes, here we are. Even to say things like, hmm, okay, let me just have a look for you is better than leaving a silence. So just to recap then, what you're aiming to do here is not to push all your words together to say as much as blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the aim is not to push all your words together and say whatever you want. The aim is just to speak slowly, but make sure your words are joined. Okay. You know that way that if you if you play well, you're probably not 
old enough to remember um, records. <laughs> Just thinking of my age here, you're probably younger than I am, but if you are old enough to remember uh, vinyl records, you know, the kind that you used to be able to play at the wrong speed, you know, those large round things, the record players, and you sat the record on them. If you put them at the wrong speed, let's say you played the record at 33 instead of 45, and if you're old enough, you know what I'm talking about, then you often heard of... You often heard very slow voices talking, but those slow voices talking didn't have spaces. They were all very joined up. You see? And if you're listening to a radio app now, of course, most of them have speed adjustments. You can slow them down or you can make them faster. You will discover that the way that we talk is never with spaces. Spaces are perceived as being violent, as being very cold, and you should avoid them. Any gaps for any more than a few seconds should be filled with, hmm, aha, let me see, let me think. And these are called fillers in English. You can search on the internet and find them, but it would be very good if you could try to use those. And it's an excellent first step towards fluency. I hope you found this helpful. Let's talk again soon.